Everybody feels good. Here's what we're going to do. One second. I love doing this thing because I'm a little crazy like the rest of everybody. We're going to take a selfie here. Uh, I want you to kind of get together a little bit, okay? Let me see if we can pull this off. You ready? Nice. I'm putting this on the news tonight. It is going to be on the news, and I want to thank everybody here. This is such a wonderful event. I love all your smiling faces. You know, people see me on the street sometime and they say, hmm, I thought you were taller. Mm, I thought you were shorter. I thought you were fatter. I thought you were whatever. It's incredible when I see live people. You all look good. You look great. Did you do makeup today and stuff like that or what? You ready for broadcast? Um, first of all, I am really uh, honored by this award. This means so much to me. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you to the committee. And congratulations to all of our honorees today. I love to see that we are rewarding good behavior. So many times, it's, it's the bad behavior that really makes the news. I just left the studio, and here we are again dealing with corruption, scandal, crime, violence. And that's just in our newsroom. Now, <laughs> I think I'm kidding, huh? So many times, uh, it's interesting that I've gone on the air and I've said good evening, and then I proceed to tell people why it's not. And we just keep building one story after another. And, you know, doing the 6 o'clock news right now is very special to me. Because we have been doing a lot of positive stories, Gail, as you mentioned. And about three months ago, the good people at Fox came over and said, listen, how about if you try something on your own, something different? And so we have taken the 6 o'clock news and converted it over to a positive newscast. We have a lot of stories. We had Tony Orlando on yesterday. We usually do a lead story talking about whatever it happens to be, like the great melting pot of New York. And then we have a guest, and Tony came on, Tony Orlando, and he's a great New Yorker, and he talked about how this city shaped his life and his career. And today we have Daniel Ballou joining us, who was talking about the recipe for success, how difficult it is to make it uh, in the restaurant business, but especially in New York, and his secrets. So we take stories that are positive, and we put those on the air, in addition to some of the headlines, and other things that we do. I hope you'll be watching because this story, in fact, will be on my 6 o'clock news tonight because I want to congratulate everybody, congratulate the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce for all the good things that you do. Now, let me just take a minute to tell you something why this award means a lot to me. First of all, my wife, who has always been such a great supporter, my dear wife, Kelly, would you please stand up, sweetheart? You know the line, God made man and said, this is good. And then he said, I can do better, and he made woman. <laughs> and, you know, our wives mean a lot to us. And my wife has been a great supporter for so many years, uh, helping me in so many ways and inspiring me to go out and do what I really believe in. But I grew up, like Mike Bloomberg, in a very small area of New Hampshire and in New England. And as a child, all of my relatives, a lot of my Greek relatives, of course, were from New York. And I've had uncles, you know, in, in Flushing and out in Long Island and New Jersey. So as a kid, I would come to New York and I would always think about being here, living here. I, honestly, from the time I was a kid, I just loved New York City. And I remember the first time, I was probably about 11 years old, and my parents took me through Times Square. And all those lights were on. And imagine a, a little kid, 11 years old, from New Hampshire seeing all those lights in Times Square. I can see it right now as I close my eyes. And I remember saying to myself, this is incredible. And I went back home and my buddies were all there and they said, what was New York like? And I said, I was in Times Square and it was daylight at night. That's what it felt like. I felt like I was living. You know what the feeling is? <clears throat> like it was the daylight. And I remember that glow that, that came over me and I said, I must be here. So I'll fast forward from Providence Boston, Chicago, 1978, New York City. And a very good friend, Ron Tendelia, who was the news director at Channel 7 ABC, he said, Ernie, we're hiring you, and, and you're going to do great. And we had conversations, and I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, this is a very diverse city. This is a great town. And he said, and you have Greek background. And he said, everybody likes the Greeks. I said, really? <clears throat> He's right, because my picture's in every diner right now, so I know that. 
Now, three decades later, and I have counted them, I have anchored 15,000 newscasts on the air. 15,000, that's a lot of words. <clears throat> Hard to believe. But, but the, the beauty of all of that is that as I walk down the street today, I, it happened to me yesterday. I was out doing a bunch of stories, interviewing people, and, and they'll come up to me and say, Ernie, I grew up with you. I've been watching you since I was a kid. And now my kids are watching you. I said, well, don't say that too loud. But it's true, you know, there are generations there. And the interesting thing is that people can remember stories that we've done on the air, taking them through all of the social history that we've had. And some of the things that really stand out to me, I've had a number of people come to me, believe it or not, and say, Ernie, I learned how to speak English with you. And I said, what do you mean? I came to this country, I really didn't know the language. And I put on television and I liked the way you spoke. You were clear, I could understand the words, and I would watch you do the news and I learned how to speak English. Now that really made me feel good. I mean, making a difference in a person's life like that. It seems, you know, minor to some people, but to me it's just being able to share what my gift is to, with other people and being able to do good things. It means a lot to me, it really does. And I love this city so much. I like putting positive stories on the air. And I have a passion and a commitment. I heard those words uh, today about having that, that love and that drive. You can't lose that. That's what keeps me going every day. Drawing back on my Greek history and traditions and uh, culture, there was a Greek philosopher who once wrote a great line. He said, I have a wish to die young, but as late in life as possible. And you know what that means, folks? A youthful heart, a youthful spirit, to have that attitude that there's still much more to do and, and not to feel jaded about life, to feel that there's an opportunity for you, there's a chance to rebuild. There's another great line, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Think about those things that you want to do, those dreams and those desires and passions that still burn inside you. Make sure that you answer the call. Take the chance, make that move. You can make a difference no matter where you are in life. And that's the spirit of these awards today. People who have done well, people who are still out there making the best of what they have and creating something new and giving back. So I thank you so much for this award. It means a lot to me. I will hold this up very high today when I'm on my new set with Nick Gregory, I'm sure, and thanking uh, everyone here for making this award possible. Thank you, I wish you all good news. God bless you all.